everybody. Welcome to Connecting with Jennifer Phils. And today I have the author, Erin Royce, with me. And we're going to have a good old time talking about what makes her special and unique and have a good time connecting. So welcome. Welcome, Erin. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate you uh, taking the time and having me on today. Of course, it is always great having anybody from Mickey's group come on over. Mickey is uh, the PR person for a lot of these authors, and so Erin is the last one of the, of the giant bunch that we've had. So tell us a little bit about what makes you special and unique. Oh my goodness, that's, that's a hard question. I know, it's open-ended for a reason, right? Because that way, anything that you come up with is going to be awesome. Special and unique. I think. I'm 50 just this year, so I, I think as I've gotten older, and even when I was younger, I, I think I've been able to um, see people differently, approach them differently in a way that they need most of the time. So I think, I think uh, you know, I'm proud of being able to do that, to take people as they are and not expect more than what they can give and to try to accept people where they are in that moment and still be there for them. Um, I've, it's been a learning process to do that. As I've gotten older, I wasn't as, as great at it, you know, when I was 15 and 19 and <laughs> a little bit about, it's all about me, but I think I've been able to do that to step back and look at the big picture and and really, you know, just try to be there for people and accept them for who, for who they are. So, you know, I think I, I do okay, but, you know, we're always learning. <laughs> Good for you. Where are you located? I am in beautiful Calgary, Alberta. So just outside of it, I, I, we're just right near the Rocky Mountains. And I was just there last weekend for the, the weekend. So it's, I'm pretty lucky. And it's a gorgeous fall this year. So. Oh, that must be beautiful. Yeah, I have a friend from Calgary and I've been up to Edmonton. You're right. Alberta is just a gorgeous, gorgeous province. Yeah. And yes, you're in Edmonton. There's a big rivalry between Calgary and Edmonton. So if you ever come back, you'll have to come this way because we're much closer to the pretty of parts of the province, we'll just say. And our hockey team's better. <laughs> That's hilarious. You know, when I when I went up there, they were they were commenting the rivalry, and I thought that was really kind of cute, because um, you know, I I heard about their mall, and I went and Ooh. checked it out. I had never seen a mall that was that big before. Like it was nuts, and and yeah, like that mall apparently is the place to be all year long because they've got like a water park in there that's like balmy and they've got ice skating rinks in there. Like, it's just enormous, that place. Like, I'd never seen anything like it. I'm like, okay, this makes it tolerable. That's impressive. <laughs> yeah, if you live in Edmonton, that's, that's what makes it tolerable, that really cool mall. Yeah, you need about, you need at least two days or more probably more to do everything and they have a hotel there every it is pretty amazing yeah yeah they even had like putt putt golf kind of thing like uh an uh a, a, a like didn't they have an aquarium like it was it was nuts it was like all all of the take take all of your towns uh amusement parks yeah. shopping restaurants and 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 amusements and uh put it under one roof it yeah and oh uh, and that's all i'm not going for it no i'm just kidding <laughs> uh, that's so funny that's so funny so i was i would assume you're born and raised up there yeah no i'm actually from ontario canada so and i i worked on cruise ships after university to pay off my school loans and to travel and one of my best friends i met was from calgary and, and when I finished, she said, oh, you should come here. And when I came here, I met my husband and he'll never move. So this is where I, I fell in love with the mountains 
in Alaska. So that's why I moved to Calgary. And then I met, you know, the love of my life. So now we're here. <laughs> oh, that is so cool. So cool. So cruise ships, and that sounds like a blast, right? Yeah. Wow. And then and then COVID hit. So so all right, take take me through the journey of like you're doing the cruise ships, you meet your husband, you move move to Calgary. Have you always been an author? Did you come into it later in life? Like, how did you get to being an author? When I was younger, 8, 10, 15, I would write poems quite a bit and short stories. And as I I was 16, when I started working, my, I just stopped. And life took over. And I went to university university for English and law and I started to write a little bit more there because I had to and you know it was just sort of something in my back pocket that I really enjoyed doing and I did not I didn't do it seriously for about 20 years I had my daughter 10 years ago at, well 11 and when she was four she is my 150% inspiration to, to start writing again. And when I sat down to write Mommy Why, I felt like I put on the oldest, most comfortable, you know, family heirloom sweater. And I thought, oh, this is what I remember. This is what I should be doing. Why has it taken me so long? So I was. 48 when I started writing Mummy Why and um, you know have continued a few others on the side but yeah my daughter was the inspiration and I was away from it for a long time I went back to look at the poems I wrote 20 years ago and I thought wow why did I leave this for so long oh because I had to make money <laughs> so yeah, it's it, it it was something I did when I was younger. I was away for a long time. And then my daughter just she was like a spark and she still is for writing. How cool. How cool. You know, your story re actually reminds me of my mom. I don't think I was the inspiration for my mom, but my mom was 48 when she started writing. Oh wow. And uh she it's it's kind of a fun story. Well, fun, not really. It's an interesting story for my mom. So in when she was 48, God, okay, hold on. She's 73 now. So I have to do some math. So she was born in 48. Okay, my math, my math brain is not working. So I want to say the 90s, somewhere in the 90s. Um, she wanted to start writing her first book. And she got involved in, she'd always been writing throughout my whole life. And she got involved in a writer's group and she decided to pursue her first novel. Now, this is before the internet. This is before a lot of things were common to us now. Yep. So at the time, she needed to get an agent and a book publisher. And uh, my mom's in Florida, by the way. And uh, her somehow she found an agent and a publishing company based in Canada. So yeah. I believe the book was supposed to be released in 1997. I think that was the date, or maybe it was 1998. It was maybe somewhere late 90s. And the problem was, is that the Canadian publishing house went bankrupt. And so because that was an asset that was under contract with them, and it was an asset, she no longer could, could publish her book. Yeah nightmare so the sales of her little little boat her like heart sales were like like deflated right like she was crushed but later on she would end up rewriting the book and guess what it was better and so she self-published and a long story behind that book it's called fire trail it's a it's a historical fiction based on the american uh, civil war oh, wow. and uh, it was actually turned into a movie and uh and had a happy it had a happy ending for my mother and then it would it was the first of five books but she was 48 when that 
started. And here she is, you know, now a, a, an author of five novels, two of which have been turned into films. So. Wow. Well, so I have something to aspire to. And, you know, when I came back from the ship, I took a writing course and, and that actually turned me off of writing for quite some time too, because when I took it, it was so, um, um, it just was not a good experience. They tore apart everything I wrote, which was fine, but there's a way to do it in a positive way and there's a way to do it not so much. So that rocked my confidence and normally I don't care but it did so much so that that is also a reason why I I after that I literally just put it aside without thinking for years again until I had my daughter and then thought well to hell with them <laughs> we could do it anyway <laughs> so but you learn with age you learn with age so that's great yeah. for mom. it gives me inspiration for sure yeah. And, and isn't it interesting, too, because you're right. You're right. Back then, what was that? That was you said that was like 20 years ago when you were doing all that. Yeah, well, that was probably. Yeah, I was in my I'm 50 now, so I was in my 20s. OK, yeah. about 30 years ago ish. Yeah. yeah. So, OK, so check this out. Like, isn't it cool? Isn't it cool that. Okay, the curation model, right? Where they have to curate what is marketable, what is sellable. Same thing with music. Yeah. I was involved in the music industry. I didn't I didn't have a record label. I self-published. And, you know, then now I've got a marketing agency. <laughs> that's a lot, that's another story. But the point is is that the curated model, they want only the best. Okay, fine. Great. But you know what? If you've got the pluck and the fortitude to do it on your own, great and so in some ways isn't it awesome isn't it better that you did what you did now versus you know um it's it's just fascinating you know we're in such amazing times for the creative expression and be yeah. a, being able to go to market on our own yeah we don't have we don't have the marketing and the and the names that the that the established groups do but still no one's going to tell us now. Well, and, that, and that's the thing. When I started, I did send it out to many places and I didn't get anything back. And, you know, I thought of my daughter and I thought, I, I can't quit. I need to finish it. And if I have to do it myself, well, I've done that most of my life. If there's something I've wanted to do, I do it myself. So that's it is nice in today's day and age that you can it's more challenging it's a lot more work to do it yourself but at the end you learn so much more you know and you know if you do it again then you know you have your building blocks and you know what they are and i've been very blessed including yourself everyone i've talked to along the way has been fantastic and just added to what I know I need to do and it's it's overwhelming <laughs> a lot of the time but you know it's it's been a good experience altogether for sure yeah for sure and you're absolutely right you know um I don't know about you but like for publishing my own books I've taken classes on how to you know become an Amazon bestseller how to do things efficiently I've had with my most recent book um I, I've had my my clients ask me, can you please do this in an audible? I'm like, oh, you want to do it in an audible too? Like, it's not enough that I've written the damn thing. It's not enough that I've put it together in like paper book format and uh, a digital. Now you want me to read it? Okay, fine. So <laughs> as of yesterday, it's taken like two weeks, but as of yesterday, I finally finished narrating it. And for me, I don't know about you, but like stumbling over my own words and like, oh boy reading my own stuff is harder because my brain is faster than my mouth. <laughs> yes, me, yeah, yeah, me too, yeah. Oh my gosh. But you know, hey, at least I'm, I'm glad that I'm going through the exercise because you're right, it's like, okay, after you kind of slug through it, right? You're like, hmm, is this something I outsource to an actor? Or you know what I mean? It's almost like 
I've taught myself a lot. Like I own a marketing agency and I have taught myself to do websites, to build websites. And I've learned that's not my genius. So either we partner with website agencies or my husband does the website design because he is more inclined and, and has a designer's eye and is smart like that. And so it's his, it's his happy place. But, but you know, if anything, if anything, right, Aaron, we just learn how to do something and realize, Ooh, this is cool. Or, Oh, this sucks. Let me delegate it. Yeah. But we are in such a beautiful time of humanity. I know that everyone wants us to think that the world is just going to hell in a handbasket. And it is in some regards, but just the fact that we've got this right here where we're in Monterey, California, you're in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, you know, um, we're talking real time. We're able to reach millions, thousands, one, two people. I have no idea, <laughs> but we're able to do what we're doing, right? <laughs> No, it's true. But, you know, my husband has always said that, you know, there's, there are some things that are worth paying money for to delegate to other people. And I've learned through this process that the last thing I want to do is market and website and FaceTime and Facebook, because I'm just, I'm not good at it. And I just want to put my head down on the, on the, on the um, desk and cry. It's not something I want to do. It's something I have to do. I'm still trying to figure that out. So I'm 100% okay with saying I'm good at this and I'm terrible at this. Who can do this for me at a reasonable price <laughs> because I'm paying for it? <laughs> right, right. And that's the beauty of it. You'll learn. You'll learn what people will and won't do for that low amount of money. And so you might discover, oh, I better just figure this out myself. But that's okay, though, because it's, again, it's a wonderful learning process. And so I'm really proud of you. Good job. Good job. Yeah, it's been, it's, it's been great. And as I said, I, I've lucked out with those that were helped me along the way and just, you know, editors and, and a web and design and, and things like that. You hit roadblocks and you just go through it. And everyone's been so gracious in this. In right. this world, I find everyone I've talked to just wants every you know everyone they talk to to succeed, and it's been really enlightening. Actually, it's it's a bright light in the way life is right now, and and so there's a lot of positive to look at. I think if if you can, you know, life's not just difficult right now for everybody. There's a lot of good things that are happening too if you look yes. for. It. Yes. Yes, good for you. I love it. So one of the things that I love to ask is, who do you serve in your life? Because, you know, we all have like different audiences of who we serve. We've got our, you know, immediate family, right? And then we've got like, you know, work or whatever our uh, inner circle looks like. And then we've got our larger community. So when you think about, you know, who you are and what you're doing in the world, who do you serve in your life? I think I think in general, whoever is in my space in that day and time, and that could be work, it could be my family, it could be my community. You know, we're more involved. I just got involved. Um, my daughter plays ring at. I don't know if in the states you know what that is. It's like hockey. It's for girls. It's hockey without the end part of it. It's just one long stick, and they have a ring. So it's not a puck, it's a ring. So they they skate faster than the boys. The the game's lightning fast. It's great and it's ice. So I, I got pulled into coaching and I don't know anything. <laughs> so so how do I serve? Well, if I if I didn't step up for this team, they need a female coach, they would not be playing. So I said, okay, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'll take all the courses in the next week and let's do it. And I'm not sleeping at night, but it's okay because my daughter can play, the team can play. And there's there's a community camp we've had where I live. It's been here for 40, 50 years. And I partnered with them with my book over Christmas, over holidays, we give donations we um 
ensure our daughter's there because it's such a community-based program that's amazing for the children in our community. So we do that and I work full time. So for our clients, I try to do the best I can for them every day. So I would say that, you know, I serve whoever needs it in the day that I'm in. And if it's if it's me, then maybe I turn everything off and <laughs> say I need a break. I'm serving myself today. Everyone else can take care of themselves. <laughs> right? Yes. Right? Yeah. Okay, I love your story. Okay, I got to go back to the girls' hockey. You call it? You said it's called ringing. It's called ringette. Ringette. Ring ringette. Yeah. So it's R I N G E T T E. Ringette. Okay, cool. So it's got this ring at the end of the stick. So the the puck has to stay within the ring the entire time, or can they use that circle to to whack it? There's no puck. It's a ring. It's a it's a, a rubber ring. Oh, so it's not attached at all. It's just that they take these sticks and they Yeah, instead of a puck like hockey, it's a ring and their stick is just straight. So they 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 have to mm -hmm. the stick and they have to push the ring around. And it's um it's similar to hockey. It's all on ice, similar rules but a lot more passing and it's quicker. So the girls, I think, could outskate the boys, you know, at the age they are. So it's a it's a Canadian sport. I played it when I was 10, 11, 12. And then oh, really? So it's been, it's not a new thing. It's been around for a while. Long, and there's scholarships in Canada at some universities where, um, or the Ringette Association will give scholarships to players. So. So here in Canada, it's, it's a bigger thing. I don't even know if in the States they play it, but they do here. And, and I've been dumped in the middle of it. <laughs> so I'm going to, I'm going to do my best. <laughs> oh my goodness. How fun. Yeah. Wow. So, so there's no combat like they do in the big hockey. Well, you know, how girls can be manipulative. So at 10 and 11, they're, they're, you know, the, the head coach and the assistant coaches are, met, are male. And so I walk in and they're like, they just, they all want to do this. I'm like, why are you laying down the law? <laughs> like, and these are dads with their daughters and it's a beautiful relationship, but you know, these daughters can twist their wonderful fathers into pretzels. But I'm a mom coming in and say, I know what you're doing, and that's going to stop right now. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's awesome. Oh my goodness. My daughter, my daughter, my daughter was very quiet about the whole process. And I said, Yes, yesterday, I said, You haven't said anything more than what, what do you feel about me being a part of this? And she said, Well, mom, I'm a little scared, to be honest. And I said, Scared. She goes, no, but in a good way, because you're, you're, you expect a lot. She goes, but, but you're there for, you're there for us too. So she goes, I know that. So I said, all right, well, let's just see how it goes. I said, because both, I said, you, I said, your team is going to show me how to play. So I have to learn too. I'm going to make mistakes and you have, you all have to be okay with that. I can teach you something, then you're going to teach me something. So. We'll see. Oh, that is a beautiful relationship right there. That is so, so cool. Good on you, Erin. Oh my gosh. We'll see. How cool is that? So, okay. So tell me about your, your, your full-time job. So you're not an author full-time? No, I work. Um, so I'm a, I'm a consultant for, um, so in the States, in the U.S., I don't know if it's the same. So workers that get injured at work. I work, I actually uh, work for the employers to, I'm sort of the in, in between to mediate, make sure everyone plays nice so that workers are doing what they're supposed to do. Employers, it brings a lot of my law background into it. We, I, argue I have to 
well, I don't want to say argue, but we, um, a, a lot of appeal work, a lot of um, trying to make sure everything's fair for everybody, which, you know, it rarely is. So it's a very intense uh, work day, usually. Um, yeah, so we just, I try to make sure it's fair for everybody. We have very, very good clients. I work for an amazing group that just wants to do the right thing with integrity. And, uh, but it's, it's a tough environment to be in for sure. So, you know, writing and doing all these other things balances that out. Yeah, you get to you get to uh, create evil characters if you wish in your in your writing and let that out. You get to beat everybody over the head with a stick or a ring. Uh, you get to let that out. So yeah, I get it. I get it. <laughs> you know what? That might be a good book to start. Actually, I'm gonna think about that. <laughs> That's so funny. So, um, well, you know, the reason I bring that up is um, my mom, ma my mother uh, wrote this one particular novel that had this uh, really bad, evil character. And, and uh, this particular character that she wrote about, there was a rape scene. And I was just like, well, I couldn't even, I couldn't, I couldn't read it. I had to put the book away for like three weeks. I could not pick it up. And I called her one day, I'm like, how? did you write this? And she, it was so funny. It was so unexpected. Her answer is she started giggling. <laughs> I love writing the bad guys. It's so much fun. <laughs> it would be. I don't know if I could write that, but that it, it would be more fun to be on that side of it because you're always trying to do the right thing. So if you're writing, you can be whoever you, you can write about whoever you want. <laughs> so I get it. Totally. Yeah, I couldn't believe that my, that was coming out of my mother's mouth. But then, <laughs> but then also too, it's like, oh, that's kind of cool, right? Because like, just because you write a song doesn't necessarily mean that that's an autobiography, right? Yeah. There's so many stories. There are so many stories out there, right? And and uh, you know, artists, uh, whether they're painting or they're writing or they're singing or they're constructing a, a beautiful instrumental piece or TikTok dances or whatever. It's just a form of expression of that mood, you know? Yeah. And I, I think if people realize that, you know, if you are like my mother-in-law is an artist and, you know, if you, you just look at something and if you, if you appreciate it and it speaks to you, then let it be that it doesn't, you don't have to go 10 layers deep to say, well, what did they mean by that? You know what? It's just really cool. So let's just appreciate that someone has the artistry to do that, whether it's, you know, if somebody can sing or play music and read music and make music, to me, that's an insane ability. And if I hear something I like, my husband makes fun of me. I don't know who anyone is. I just hear stuff that I love. And I like all kinds of things, all kinds of books, music, whatever. He remembers who plays what and who sings what. So I ask him all the time. I'm like, remember that song? It's like, da, 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 da. and he's like, oh, yeah, it's blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so I think, you know, we're so, human beings are so lucky that we have people that can be creative that way that I just appreciate it. I don't need to know the background of it. Just thank you for it. Just thank you is how I feel usually with music, books, art, anything. Oh, that is so cool. Okay, well, that's like the perfect segue, like you predicted it. So I always love to ask, what is your why? You know, there is, there's a why that we get up and we do the things that we do, you know, especially like, you know, I, I often talk to business owners, right? And <laughs> there's a reason why they started that business. Now, there are maybe times in that business where it's so challenging that every morning they're like, I really don't want to get up out of bed for this, but there's a bigger why, right? So, yeah. and we, and our why changes as we mature, right? The why that we have at age 15 and the why that we have at age 45 may be different from the why that we have at 70, right? So where you are at 50, what is your why currently? So, gosh, that's a hard, that's a hard question. I completely agree with you. It changes all the time. So, you know, where I am with the work that I do right now, and I will continue for a few years, 
it allows me the flexibility to be there for my family in the way I want to be. Um, when my daughter needs something, I can be there. You know, when I was, when I found out I was pregnant, I made a decision to stay in a particular career because it would give me balance. I can be there for my family and I can work. Was it exactly what I wanted to do? There were some things, yes. So I'm still in that. She's 11. So her school is two blocks from my house. I'm working from home right now. So is it the is it the dream job? No, but there are lots of things I like about it. And I can drop everything in a day and attend to my family, to my husband, to whoever, if I need to. So the reason I work where I work is because I can be there for my family. And I choose to have other outlets for the joy of living. So to be with her in Ringette, to sit with her at night and have our moments to talk. Um, because when she leaves our house, she, you know, I want her to have that foundation. So I, I make sure I spend time with her. I make sure that my why to do that is so that she always has a place to come back to. She knows she's loved. She knows she has support that we put this beautiful person out into the world that is productive and loving and can give. So you know, I'm in the place in my life now so I can give to her, to my family. I work so I can, I like my own money. So, <laughs> you know, and right now my writing is the joy on the side. And if I could just do that at some level of, in some year, I might. That's the hope. But right now, you know, I think part of what we do, we do because we have to, because we want to, and it'll get us to where we want to be in the future. And I suppose that's like my why right now isn't about me. It's about the people I love. And um, I'm starting to come into the forefront a bit more. I put went the background up for quite a quite a while, but now I'm like, well, I want to do some stuff for me too. So, so that's coming forward again. And and like you said, it'll change. Two years from now, it'll be different. Five, ten. Yeah. It is shocking, isn't it? How quickly it goes, you know, but you're right though, to have, to have that purpose of showing your daughter what a badass woman can do and be self-sufficient and go and have some fun. I mean, that's, ah, oh, you're doing such a great, great job. Great uh, job. It's a day-to-day it's, it's day -day thing. I take everything day-to-day. -day. I'm like, I'm a good mom today. Tomorrow I'm going to suck probably, but then it'll get then I'll, then I'll have a good moment. <laughs> and then, you know, I'm a good wife today, tomorrow we're, we might argue, but the next day it's going to be awesome. So you just have to, none of us are perfect and you just learn. Life is learning. Right. For yeah. sure. For yeah. sure. So with that, what advice do you have for anybody who, I mean, gosh, you've accomplished so much. And I, what's so cool about you is I know that you're going to accomplish a lot more. You're like, you're just getting started. Right. So what advice do you have about for, for people about anything, or if you want to be more specific, if they want to live that type of life, what, what do they need to do in order to get there? Just do it. Just do it. I mean, don't, I mean, you hear people all the time say, don't listen to other people, but at the end of the, at the end of the day, if in your gut, your instincts, in your bones, in your skin, you feel that that your body, your spirit will tell you the right thing. If you're considering, should I do this? Should I do that? Your gut is going to say yes or no. So go go with that when you can't decide with your brain and your heart, and and stick with that because your gut feeling about things, your instinct about things. Is the right way to go, I feel, all the time. And it may take you a while to get there, but you will get there. And it's never going to be the way you think. It's never going to be in the time that you think. Just know that you'll get there and, and persevere. Perseverance to me is is um, key. You have to just keep, keep at it if you really believe in what you want to do and how you want to do it. 
And part of that is depending on other people. I'm very, I'm very, very um, independent. It took me a long time to ask for help and ask questions and depend on other people. But I think to get to where you want to go, you have to, and none of us do it by ourselves. Appreciate every single person that's helped you get to where you've gotten in that moment, whether it's a look or they say something or they refer you to someone. You, none of us get to where we want to go without help. So ask for it, appreciate it, be grateful for it and persevere. Just if you want to do it, do it because you will be successful or it'll bring you into direction. If you go one way, all of a sudden the door opens up and you're like, holy heck, I didn't think that would happen. So it brings you into a whole other area that you should be in that you never even thought of. So be open to anything. I love that you said that. Um, I don't know if you've ever experienced this. I'm guessing you have, but like for me at the beginning of 2021, I set down some goals for myself, financial goals for my business. And about halfway through, I'm like, uh-oh, I'm not, I'm not hitting those goals. And here we are, we're at the beginning of Q4. I'm like, uh-oh, I'm not hitting those goals. But I did bump up my goals a bit. Like I think I didn't hit, I didn't hit the stretch goals, but I definitely am seeing some growth. And like you said, we think it's gonna go this way. But then we have another opportunity that takes us this way. Yeah. And we think it's going to be this way that gets us to where we want to go. But it's actually the development of this other thing that's going to get us there faster. But we just have to be open to the possibilities and to say yes to the opportunities as they come. Yeah, I, I agree with you completely. There's always a plan. Just keep going. And yeah. you'll, you'll be surprised. At like You'll be looking back going, how did that? Wow, I never expected that. Well, and be, be proud of yourself. So you have to, have to, have to be proud of yourself for the little changes. It's not always the big picture. It's just like, well, this is where I am right now, but this is, I've changed. I've taken two steps. Well, that's huge. You may not have taken your 20, but you're taking two. And that's more than where you were. So I think people have to give themselves a break and be grateful for the little changes that happen and 100% keep your eyes open and be aware of all the opportunities, other opportunities around that will take you in a direction you've never thought of. And then you're like, wow, this is awesome. How did this happen? Well, because you're open to it. So yeah, I think, I think everyone just needs that confidence in themselves. Know you can do it, persevere and be open to it. Just be open and things will come your way. I love it. I love it. Okay. Let's talk about how people can find you and your book and connect with you. How do they find you, Erin? Um, probably the easiest is the website that I have. Speaking of marketing and websites, you might change. But anyway, it, my developer doesn't do it anymore. So, but it's um, it's uh, www.erin, so Aaron D. R O Y C E, so Aaron D. Royce.com. On that website, there's a link to Facebook and um, email, so it's probably the best or most direct way to get in touch with me. Awesome. Uh, we'll read about the, or read about Mommy White. I'll give you know a little synopsis of what it's about. And is available, is Mommy Why available on, on uh, Amazon? Yeah, it's on Amazon.com and Amazon.ca. It's a little bit hard to find, <laughs> but it's, it is there. That's why it's easier. It's, if you can't find it, you can always go to the website. You'll we'll link onto the Facebook, and then I could be in touch that way if, um, if that works as well. Well, that is fantastic. So for anyone who's watching and taking notes like I am, what is your email address? It is R-O-Y-C-E 120. Oh, no, sorry. R-O-Y-C-E-E -E 120 at gmail.com. 
or I, I'm not technically savvy, so I have to think. My, <laughs> Facebook, my website, I'm telling you, it's not my forte. <laughs> That's okay. Just it's okay. R O Y C E E one twenty at gmail.com. That's awesome. Clearly, you have a common enough name that they had to relegate a a, a, a funky spelling for you. <laughs> there you go. That one out, that's for sure. That's so fun. Well, I am so excited that you joined us. Truly, I hope everybody that you got a chance to enjoy listening to Erin talk about her journey and what fun. I mean, you are such, a, what I love is I can see that you are a very intelligent, multi-dimensional per person and uh i just am so happy for you i love it you've got this great daughter you're having fun with ringette you're an attorney who is helping people out of their uh work issues when they get hurt and an author i mean my goodness woman what don't you do it's awesome <laughs> so that's gonna come when i retire so i'm looking for I'm looking forward to some nap time in about 15 years. So <laughs> I try to stay healthy. I try to work out still. I try to drink lots of water and then I'll sleep when, you know, I'm done. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. I love it. I love it. Well, everybody, I hope you enjoyed yourself. Thank you so much for watching us on Connecting with Jennifer Filson. Please do look up Erin Royce at erindroyce.com and go check out her books and and support her because she's awesome all right erin thank you so very much i hope you have a beautiful and blessed evening Mwah. i appreciate you having me on it was awesome thank you my pleasure okay be well bye, bye.